and down thing? Yeah. Well, just the idea that you can recursively get something from the numbers before. To get numbers here, you, you get it from the one, well, look at this one here. Like this number comes from the two above it there. If we think about it physically as moving down pathways, um, you can think about it as uh, counting things, right? There's one way to be there, you're starting there. There's one way to get here, you move that way, right? There's one way to be here, you move that way. How many ways are there to get here? But just without talking about left and right, there's one way to get there, isn't there? The only way to get there is by going like that, right? There's no other way to get to that thing if you can only move down, right? You can't go down here and back up, right? You can only go down. To get to this box, there's only one way to get there. Like if this was, if this is sort of a some kind of a thing where you drop a ball in at the top and there's little pegs that make it go one way or the other, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you think if you know what I'm talking about, but and the ball either has to drop this way or this way each time. There's only one way it can get here, right? It, could, it can go this way and then this way, right? That's the only way I can get to that square. And there's only one way it can get to this square, right? So there's two ways it can get to this middle square. We'll do it in a different color. It can go that way and then this way, or it can go that way and this way, right? Those numbers that come up there are one way you can think about what those numbers mean are the number of ways you can actually physically, if this was a physical setup here, the number of ways you can get there. It also happens to be the numbers of combinations for that very reason, because if I asked you to solve that kind of a problem that said, how many ways can you get to this, you'd probably think about it as, well, I got to count how many moves I have to make to get there, right? If I looked at this and said, however I get there, I have to make, uh, how many moves down do I have to make? I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Somehow I have to make 10 moves to get there, right? It takes 10 moves to get down to there, doesn't it? From 10 moves, if I'm going to end up in this space right here, there's a certain number of rights and a certain number of lefts. I better write this under before I lose it. Certain number of rights, certain number of lefts. To get there, somehow I have to go, I have to do um, one, two, three, four to the right. And how many times to the left does that mean? Except I just called that left, four lefts. <laughs> Maybe that's why you don't understand it, because I'm calling it left when I mean right. And so on. That means you have to do six times to the right. Okay, six rights. If you don't believe me, you can rearrange them and see. Even if you zigzag down, it's still going to be some organ some way of rearranging that, right? Like you can zigzag down and go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right. Right? If you count it up there, it's one, two, three, four, five, six times to the right and four lefts, right? However you get there, pick any pathway to get down there, right? Even going this way, six times to the right, four left. If you want to know the number of ways to get to this particular spot here, it's some way of rearranging those moves. We know lots of different ways you could count that. If you want to know how many ways could I do this, one way to look at that would be to say, I'm just going to write the letters out and treat it as permutations with identical objects. How do you work out, how do you use the idea of permutations with identical objects? This is like, how do you, how many ways can you rearrange the letters of that word? You know those types of things we've done before? If you have 10 objects, but you have six of one kind, four of the other kind, how do you work out how many ways you can rearrange those letters? Um, well, yeah, you can think about it two ways, right? There's 10 altogether. That, that's, that's how many arrangements there are if they were all different. But you've got this group that's the same, so you need a 6 factorial and you need a 4 factorial. That's how many arrangements of this there are. Right? That's, that's how, that'll be how many ways you can get to this particular spot here. You can also think about it differently and say, I, I'm not going to think about it like that. I'm just going to think about that there's 10 moves 
and I'm going to number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This is a totally different way of thinking about it, but it'll give you the same answer. There's 10 moves, and I want to choose which of them are going to be the left or the right, let's say. Choose six of them to be to the right. Right? Because if you if you know to get to this box here, you've got to go to the right six times in your ten moves. So you can just you could say I could pick that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, right? That could be your six. That's one combination. Or you could pick you know, you could say I'm going to pick those three and then this one, this one, and this one. That's another combination. Each one of them is a different combination. What you're doing is saying from the ten moves, I'm going to choose six of them to be to the to the right. From ten, I want to choose six rights. Right? Is the first move to the right? Is the third move? Is the second move? That is the same as this. That's actually, if you if you look at the formula for 10C6, what does it say? What does the formula say for NPR? What does it say? NCR, sorry. NCR is N factorial over N minus R factorial for the ones that you do not choose. But you also need, since you don't care about the order of the ones you do choose, you need that as well. If I work that out, I'd get 10 factorial because there's 10. R is 6 and minus R is 4. That's the same thing as that. Whether you look at it as permutations of identical with identical objects or you look at it as combinations, you get the same thing. The value in here is 10C6. Does that help at all or does it make it worse? It helps. Why six not four? It, it, you're right. It's, it's, it's going to be exactly the same as this one. It's a very good question, right? And that's one of the things you have to know is this is going to be exactly the same as this. I just in my mind said I'm going to call this, I'm going to, I'm going to count the number of right moves rather than left moves, right? You could do exactly the same thing and say, um, like by symmetry, these are going to be the same, right? Yeah, you could count four lefts. These, the number of combinations, this is always going to have symmetry to it because no matter how many ways there are to get to here, it's going to be the same as the number of ways to get there, right? Because it's just reversing it, right? It's, it's going to be a symmetric pattern, right? It, these are always going to be the same here. This ends up being a three and this is a three because if you, if, if you say, I got to go left, left, right, left, left, right. If I count all the ways to rearrange that, it has to be the same as if I count two rights and a left. It's just, it's just reversing the types of symbols, right? This will have the same number of ways of rearranging it as this does, right? Any any box you pick is going to be the same as its sort of mirror image on the other side of the pattern. So if this is, what is this actually? Let's figure out what this one is. What row is that? What does it deal with here? Let's get rid of some of this junk around here. Is it, it's the eighth row because there's four. No, it's the ninth row, so it deals with eight. This is the ninth row, so it deals with eight, right? This is going to be from, I got to make eight moves to get here. It's going to be eight, C2. It's also going to be the same as the one over here, which is going to be the same, which is going to be what? Eight, C6, right? The kind of those two are going to be the same for the exact reason that, you know, if you're counting, how many lefts do you have to make out of eight? How many how many ways can you count two lefts out of eight? It's got to be the same as how many ways can you count six rights out of eight, right? Or six lefts out of eight? It's the same. That's that symmetric pattern here. There's a line. If you draw a line down the middle, those numbers are always going to be the same. If you count, and I know I showed you this last time, but we can uh, do it again here because I don't know how much if you remember this. May even be still on there. Look at that. It's still on there. Amazing. I haven't used my calculator since then. If you or or I haven't saved the state of the calculator. I guess that's it. If you want to if you do things like two, remember two C two C zero. Um, 
two C one. It spits out the number for you. Two C two. Or you can do the whole thing all at once. Like if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to do, I guess we did, uh, well we could do seven. If you want to do seven C two, that gives you the single value. But if you want all the possible values from that, if you do this, but you do that list thing, remember if you put the curly brackets here, zero, one, all the way up to, Okay, if you do this all the way down to the end there, this gives you all the possible, like it gives you the entire row for the whole thing. I will have to stop this and restart it.